Hello and welcome back to Tanya and Oslo Knits. My name is Tanya, I live in Oslo, Norway, and this is my podcast where I talk about everything knitting. First of all, welcome back if you have seen my other episodes, or welcome if you're new here. My name is, as I said, Tanya, but I'm Tanya in Oslo on Instagram, on Pinterest, um, sometimes on Snapchat as well, so feel free to join me in any other channel if you'd like. And if not, welcome to YouTube. First of all, what am I wearing? Well, this is a um, kofta, as you would say in Norwegian. It's like a traditional Norwegian cardigan with stranded color work all over. Um, I have not made a pattern of this. I've just freestyle knitted it, but I have a children's sweater pattern with the same kind of motif. And I figured, I think it's seven years ago now or so, that I wanted a garment for myself in that motif. So I grabbed some pure echo baby wool, as it was called. It's a discontinued yarn with a gauge of 28 stitches per 10 centimeters. Um, technically, there's an online shop that still sells it, like Dollar produces it for them, but it's not the same anymore. At least I don't think so, so um, I don't really buy it anymore but um, I have a lot in my stash. So sometimes you'll see this in any makes that I have, but but it's it was not marketed as Merino, but it feels that way. And I have sensitive skin and it doesn't itch at all, which is why I wanted to make a garment in it. I did make a no frills cardigan in the same yarn, but I combined it with mohair. And at that point I didn't realize that I find at least I think it was Rowan Kid Silk Mohair. I found it quite itchy, so I'm kind of regretting that garment. But this one I'm happy with, because there's no mohair here. Mine, as you can see, is missing a couple of buttons, because I wore this a lot, and they kept falling off. I have them in a drawer somewhere, I just never got around to reattaching them. But oh well. Um, I've, I think I wore it every day for two winters in a row. Uh, so it's been a very nice knit. And will it ever be a pattern? Well, this is 28 stitches per 10 centimeters, which is typically not the kind of pattern I sell the most of, um, which is why the sweater patterns I make are more chunky. It's just something about the um, sellability, if you can call it that. Uh, but it's one of my most treasured garments and also I got to explore a technique that I've used for patterns since then, which is this button band, which you can see is double. And then uh, I stick the gar garment and I then fold the raw edge into the button band. So it's actually hidden in the button band itself, which I think is quite clever. And then the button holes, they are reinforced so that, first of all, they're more sturdy, but second of all, there's no peeking out of that raw edge. I guess I kind of trimmed it a bit. Um, and of course, I, I know there are different ways of securing your yarn, but for this, I decided to sew several seams with my sewing machine before cutting, because that's what sticking is. You're cutting your yarn, um, and or you're knitting, and that is a bit daunting, especially the first two or three times. For some, it's daunting all the way. But if you're trying sticking, I actually recommend starting with a baby project, like a baby knitwear project, because that's less terrifying, in, at least in my experience. So that's actually wearing two uh, knitting items. I also have a scrunchie, uh, which is the same pattern. It doesn't show that well, but or the same motif, but this is actually a knitting pattern. Um, it's called Senbu Scrunchie, and you can find it in Unravelry, and if you're in Norway and read Norwegian, you can find it in my tonyandoslo.no store, if, if you're interested. But what's happened since last time? It's been a while. Uh, it's been... I mean, it went from, normally we have this slow transition in Oslo, at least compared to other parts of Norway, where we have winter, snow melting, spring, 
and then summer, but this time it felt like it was snow, 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 boom, summer. Um, and it's been super warm in May and very lovely, which also means that nap time's been considerably shorter for my baby than normal. So I haven't had any time to film, but I haven't time to knit. So I have several things to show you. And my first finished object is not something I can show because I was so excited to finish it that I gave it away almost immediately. It is the owl sweater that you might have seen in previous episodes. If you have been here before, welcome back. If not, welcome. I'll try to show you a snapshot I took of my mother wearing it because it was a Christmas gift for her that she got to pick the wool herself and the colors. We went around shopping together. I can recommend doing that because I knew I wanted to knit it in Emma bombs. I knew which pattern I wanted to knit, of course, the owls, but I think it's good to, when it's such a big garment, let people have an input when it comes to colors to make sure that it's actually something they will wear. So we went to the yarn shop, we tested out some yarns by holding it up to my mom's face and see what actually fit her skin. Um, and surprisingly, it was not the first color we chose, but the second one that worked. The first one works better for me. Uh, so I actually went back to the yarn shop and... Oh, I actually went to a different yarn shop, but that's not the point. <laughs> I went back and bought that first color for myself. So once we move on to the whips, you can get to see um, that color, color in action. But yeah, the owl sweater, um, it fits my mom and it looks good and I'm very happy with it. So now I just have to meet up with my mom on a not super warm sunny day so that we can take some pictures so that I can actually publish the pattern in the fall. And then the other day I realized that of course I have some Australian customers and for them it's fall now. So when I say fall, I'm talking about September, October, just to make that clear. But yeah, let's move on to my finished objects that I actually have here. I think I just talked about this one last time, uh, but I have finished it and blocked it. This is, I haven't figured out the name yet, but it's a car sweater. I made this in Sunnest Double Sunday on needle sizes three and a half for the ribbing and four for the pattern and then three and a half also for the um, single color sections, stockinette part. I actually find that, I know a lot of patterns recommend that you go down half a needle size for the ribbing and yes, you can do that, but I, in this case, I chose to, or in most of my sweaters, I choose to rather uh, decrease a bit before the actual ribbing, both there and also for the, it's more pronounced for the sleeves. But once it's worn, right now, it cinches in a bit. But... Ugh, it's not doing what I wanted to do. There we go. It cinches in a bit, but once it's worn a couple of times, it will stretch out in the ribbing section and it is fairly smooth all over. It's not a balloon shape, but the sleeves are a bit wider than uh, my 2021 and 2020 sweaters and so on. So um, yeah, some changes from year to year. I have to I don't have to, but I like developing as a pattern maker. So overall, this will be, I'm happy with it. I've taken photos, did remember doing that, but it's going to be a gift for my godson who is turning two this week. And I hope it fits. If not, there's a little brother on the way there so that he can pass it on to his um, baby brother if he can't wear it himself. Or his mother can, because, you know, it's, somehow it's actually a gift for her. Then, a bit of a knitting failure on my part, but it has ended up being a finished object. I made these, and as you can tell, whoops, 
Can you spot the mistake? These are two right mittens. And I was so annoyed with myself because I've made so many mittens in my life. I thought I had figured out a method to not make a mess like this, but apparently I hadn't. Maybe it's the mama brain. Maybe it's just <laughs> an honest mistake, but I was so annoyed. And I was like, I do not want to unravel this. I don't want to frog this. Because it's half a mitten and I had already... This is my second pair and I was like, ah. It's just something about unraveling that feels like a waste of time and I really dislike it. I'm trying to be more open to unraveling so that I can appreciate yarn to a greater extent. But overall here I decided that no I'm going back to the yarn store and I'm gonna see if they have another ball of tin pigment in the same colorway and the same dye lot and they did so I didn't have to unravel instead here we go a full proper pair that has not been blocked yet but it's the witch permittance they will be blocked they will become a pattern before Halloween, so that anyone with a Halloween-y sense um, can make them for themselves. Because this is a ladies pattern. And I had one of my followers asking me if I would end up making a children's pattern as well. And first of all, well first I figured I don't think it's going to work because I was, I was thinking about down downsizing what's actually here but then i figured that there's quite a bit of cauldron around the cat so i think i might give it a shot i'm just in this luxury situation for a pattern maker that i have so many ideas and so little knitting time so right now i'm not feeling the motivation to knit the second pair um all complete um and i'm not feeling the Halloween vibe right now so it's on the list but it's a bit a bit further down than some other ideas I have. Speaking of feeling a mojo for a project I ended up with a UFO before I think it was before Christmas because I ran out of yarn and then you saw a couple of episodes ago if you have been here before that I bought a ball of um, Filcolana Arveta or Arweta in the color red squirrel <laughs> scratching myself like a squirrel that's fun i made the lady socks pattern in october november and then i never occurred to me to make a kid size pattern as well it was only when i released the adult size pattern and my followers started asking me about making a kid's pattern that i was like oh yeah that's a pretty good idea, but I was trying to use up the scraps from the uh, ladies' size um, socks, and that was not enough for a full four to five years pair, but after I bought another ball, it actually could happen. And I actually just finished um, a pair in two to three years as well, but I don't know where I put them. I tried finding them before filming, but... I finished them yesterday, so they can't have gotten that far, but I don't know where they are at the moment, so I'll just have to go looking a bit further. But it will be definitely in kid sizes up on, up to... That's the thing, I haven't decided yet. There's a gap between older kids and uh, smallest uh, lady size right now. I might try to close that before a pattern re release, but... We'll just see how much time I have before then. I mean, I'm on maternity leave. I have a baby. Um, let's see what's realistic or not, first of all. There's definitely going to be something of a pattern. So no worries. And then on to another issue, which I just have to face, which is Instagram outreach for my pictures, because knitting for me is a small business and... The algorithms are working against me and at least my still images. I mean, I have a much greater outreach on Pinterest. I'm tonning also on Pinterest as well as on Instagram, if you want to follow me. But on Instagram, my 
outreach is just really, really, really poor. Uh, and it has been for <sighs> almost a year. I've had, before Christmas, a couple of my super Christmassy pictures did go viral. Um, if you can call it that, at least they got a much better response to some of the others. But overall, Instagram just isn't rigged for still photography anymore, which I, I really enjoy photography. So it makes me really sad because I don't feel like I have that much of a channel for it anymore. But I still have Pinterest. So what I figured is that if I'm going to keep posting things on Instagram, it should just be video content and then I have to make video content. So this next part here is about me prepping for a reel. Rather reluctantly, but I'm doing it anyways. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to see how much I can make out of two balls of Summit Sunday. So I bought these two colors. It's 3021 and 3072. So two brown shades, because I was asked to make a pair of baby teddy socks or teddy sock in Norwegian. So I figured I'll see how much I can squeeze out of these two balls. And it turns out it's quite a lot. So let's just look through what I have so far. The teddy socks. Nothing's been blocked yet, so it's all a bit rough, but once it's smoothened out, it, it's going to look great. This is size 6 to 12 months. So check for what I was asked to actually make. Then I moved on to a pair of Fana Baby, Baby Mittens. It's it sounds, if you're Scandinavian, it sounds close to a Norwegian swear word. It's not. Fana is a part, uh, it's a district or area on the west coast of Norway. And uh, this kind of stripey pattern with lice on it. These dots are called lice in Norwegian. The Norwegian word as well. And it's translated that well. well yeah. It's translated that way as well. Some people find it a very weird name. It's just what it's called. That's how it is. I think they're quite cute. It's a pattern I released many years ago. Simple, but easy. And then I figured I still had a lot left. So uh, I made the car motif. I turned into these two to six months tiny socks as an electric car because electric cars are just very popular in Norway, tax incentives and so on. So you can see the wire going from the back of the car and then you have the plug there on the back. Hopefully it's fun. I hope people enjoy it. I don't know yet. Let's just see. So so far, two pairs of socks and one pairs, one pair of baby mittens. Then my godson will receive these socks as well. If I fold it out, you can see the pattern a bit more closely. This is called floral mini socks. So the car socks, they have not been released yet, but this was released a year ago, I think or at least before I had my baby. And that was size two to three years. And then here we have Selbe Baby. You find many different versions of this online, but this is my take on simple Selbe mittens for babies. One pair there and then second one where I haven't weaved in the ends. And then I've cast on a third because I'm planning a picture. Let's see if I can post it here if I finish it before finishing um, this video. And I have enough yarn for a third pair. And then we'll see how many grams I have left. Maybe Fana Mittens again, Fana Baby Mittens or Eastern Ender Baby Mittens. 
And if I don't think it's going to work, I think I'll make these festive final decoration mittens that I'm publishing in um, September or so. Other than that, I only have one other whip this time. I've been quite good at casting off. And that is the color I was talking about that I did not choose for my mom, but that worked well for me. It's the 006 color, Emma Bombs. That's also going to be a sweater project. I can tell that my baby's waking up, so we'll talk more about this next time when it might actually be done. So thank you for joining me for this episode, and I hope you had some time crafting, and I will see you guys next time. Happy knitting! <laughs>